gender injustice has to be the most prevalent and the most deeply entrenched injustice that there is in the world. Women in Pakistan are always treated as uh, a non-entity, as not even a human being. Uh, she is always considered less human being than the man. That discrimination starts at the very beginning, even when she is not even born. And then, you know, as she grows up, she is treated as a second uh, um, great citizen. So the big issue that we are confronted with in Pakistan is violence, honor killing is a big problem. You know, the girls are not allowed to get married of their own choice. And if they do that, the father or brother can kill her. There has always been violence based on gender. The weight of stigma attached to that has prevented people in the past from speaking out. But more and more people now are, are, are raising it. Um, more men are becoming gender champions in the communion, which has been really helpful. And uh, there is a sort of a growing awareness that this is in, it's in all our interests and it's a gospel issue. For Burundi, the women and the, even children are victims of this uh, sexual harassment and the sexual violence. Their families send them out and sometimes we find them on the streets or with the homeless and uh, all the, those they need the care they need our support in the prayers. We have to, to give them in the church uh, and the protection. We listen to them and if possible we plead for them but we, we give them space in the church and uh, try to, to protect them, especially to provide a moral support, to show them love, compassion and uh, affection. In Australia we're uh, very conscious of this. Uh, often people who were the victims of violence were blamed. They were, they were thought to have somehow provoked it or been responsible. All sorts of stereotypes have been used uh, to further victimise uh, particularly women and I think that uh, we have a much greater awareness internationally and in many local contexts and, uh, and see those as being unacceptable. If you talk about gender justice in our context, it's just like a dream. Because in most times, women are so much marginalized. As a human being, you have your rights that are God-given. A woman can do what a man can do. And as a result, we are changing those cultures. We are not saying cultures are bad, but we want to change cultures which seem to discriminate a woman's position, talent. In my own married life, I was a victim of violence for almost 10 years. This was a big blow to my family, especially my father who was at that time the Bishop of Sialkot and he was the moderator of the Church of Pakistan and it was a difficult decision for him to make. But then he decided for me that I should uh, come back to the family. I started my life, you know, all over again and I thought that uh, that is the end of my life and the church called me to work for them on, uh, on the, as the national coordinator for the women's work. Which was very difficult for me to take this decision. But I drew my strength from the women with whom I worked. The pain that I had in my own life became my passion. And so when I was looking at these women who were rejected, who were, you know, thrown away from their homes, who were battered and who did not have any any support, family support. I used to, you know, um, think about them, that what, how, I am an educated woman, but these women are ordinary women. They have no education, they have no resources, they have no skills. And how are they going to, from where are they going to draw their strength, you know? And so I started working with them. I used to take women in my house. And this pain became my passion. The great thing is that there are women and men out there. There's the wonderful International Anglican Women's Network. Uh, men and women who are willing to really work for it. People with great passion, great faith. So I think we're, we're really onto something, but we cannot be complacent. We really can't. 
this is what I always tell the women that even if you've lost your husband or your husband has left you, Jesus is there to take care of you and he will walk through with you.